Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Donald Trump and his administration have unilaterally published what they're calling an interim final rule in the Federal Register, which will make it almost impossible for asylum seekers to qualify for safe haven in the United States if they fail to request amnesty from their home countries or did it in transit. This will only be implemented, it seems, on the southern border for Central Americans. It may break international law and UN agreements as well. This has led to lawsuits from the ACLU, the union that represents asylum officers, and numerous immigrant rights groups. We are joined now by Angelo Guisado, who is staff attorney for the Center for Constitutional Rights, one of the other plaintiffs in this case, where he represents the latest asylum case seekers, asylum ban cases that happened before, and the Port of Entry metering case. And Angelo, welcome, good to have you with us here. Thank you for having me. So this is, you know, they've been trying to stop this for a while, clearly the Trump administration. But this particular way of stopping, saying, well, let me let you explain it to our, to, to our viewers, exactly what they did and why it may violate not only U.S. law as it stands now, but even international law through the U.N. Sure. So uh, on Tuesday, the Trump administration published what's known as an interim final rule. Um, pretty oxymoronic, but it has uh, the effect <laughs> of denying... Um, asylum seekers the right to apply for asylum if they had not applied through any country that they first passed through. So the prototypical situation is a Central American flees one of the Northern Triangle countries, passes through uh, Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico, uh, gets to the southern border, uh, asks for asylum in the event that they're able to actually um, get processed, which is the subject to a number of other lawsuits then they, if they did not first apply for asylum, either Mexico or Guatemala or any other country through which they ventured to get to the border, they are rendered ineligible for asylum. And that violates uh, U.S. and international law for a number of reasons. So let me ask, let's stop for a moment. I mean, before I get into other things, how, how does it violate our own laws in this country and international law? Let's, I think that needs to be explained. Sure. So... Um, the founders of this country were very clear that they wanted a separation of powers and certain checks uh, for the different branches. We leave our legislative um, uh, prerogative to Congress. Congress writes the law and the executive signs it, uh, and the judiciary decides whether it's constitutional or not. Um, in this instance, in 1980, when Congress passed the Immigration Nationality Act, Refugee Act, um, they made a number of provisions governing what happens uh, to an asylum seeker when they pass through other countries, right? So one provision is called um, firm resettlement, which deals with what happens when an asylum seeker plops down, lives happily, and is safe in a third country. They're then not allowed uh, to apply for asylum because they are already safe in a third country. And the other is called the safe third country agreement or safe third party. Um, and that's an instance in which an asylum seeker gets to a place like Canada where we have a bilateral agreement to say that Canada, as well as the United States, are safe. The asylum seeker can't pick which country they go to. They have to apply in whichever uh, country they get to first. Mm -hmm. Famously, we have no safe third country agreement with any of the Central American countries or Mexico. So what does that mean, though? So if we have no agreement with those countries, then how does that law to apply people coming through Mexico into the United States? Where's the contradiction? Right. Well, the contradiction is that um, many of those places are indeed not safe, and that's the reason why we don't have a safe third party agreement. So if an individual goes to Guatemala, for instance, with whom we don't have an agreement, uh, a country which uh, struggles on its own to provide uh, human rights protections, uh, which only affords maybe a uh, 100 asylum applications a year, um, administration's decision to force that person to apply in Guatemala first um, is illegal because Congress already thought of that. Congress said you either A, have to have a third party, a safe third party agreement, or B, have to be firmly resettled in that country, where neither scenario is present, as is the case for the tens of thousands of asylum seekers currently waiting in our borders. You can't force them to apply in a country that either A, isn't, uh, doesn't have a safe third party agreement, or B, the asylum seeker hasn't firmly resettled there. So one of the things interesting about that, I don't know how this applies, I'm very curious. There was an article in Common Dreams that I read earlier today um, about asylum seekers, and we're going to, there's, it was a tweet, and this tweet um, was from somebody who worked with them, and let me, you'll see it here on the screen, but I want to read it to you. This is, a, about, this is a Salvadorian woman 
who was allegedly shot and killed by Mexican police, Maria Saneda Escobar Cerritos, 19. She, she was on her way to visit her father in Santa Cruz and was killed when police opened fire on a bus. Um, days after Mexico launched its immigration crackdown, a truck full of immigrants came under fire. Uh, and the assailants were the police, according to these two tweets that came out. So, I mean, in part, given what Trump has done pressuring Mexico, Mexico has become, maybe already was, an unsafe country for these immigrants. Is that part of the argument? I, it, I mean, it certainly is. Uh, there's a reason that the Department of State has uh, a do not travel warning to uh, at least uh, a, a dozen states, um, many of which I've ventured to, and I indeed felt unsafe, and it's very unsafe for migrants, especially in the critical border towns. I'm not here to malign Mexico. Right. I think that the United States uh, has done enough harm to migrants that we don't need to harp on uh, what Mexican officials have done. Um, but one of the key things is, as you mentioned, yes, these aren't safe areas. The United States Department of State won't send its employees to these countries or to these states in Mexico. Why should we expect asylum seekers to have to apply for asylum in areas in which they don't feel safe? So we have the other day, Attorney General William Barr, who, like him, he said the surge of asylum claims in the U.S. on the border was, quote, forum shopping by applicants attempting to exploit American generosity. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's, this is a, a cl clearly a political move on the part of the Trump administration. But going back to what you were saying earlier, violating kind of federal rulemaking, uh, that seems to prohibit them from doing that with the Immigration Nationality Act. So, so how do you think this is going to go? I mean, you have to... Uh, Lee Gellant, the, the uh, ACLU attorney, um, said it clearly violates domestic and international law and cannot stand. But given the court system today, can it stand? What's going to what, what do you think will happen here? I don't think so, and I'm loath to contradict my co-counsel Lee, um, who is an absolute brilliant lawyer. He is that. Uh, yeah, and 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 who will um, argue next week uh, on a temporary restraining order? That, these, um, that this interim final rule indeed does violate uh, the INA and other uh, federal laws. As we argued the first time during the first asylum ban, if you recall earlier in April, they released a similar rule in which anyone who crosses in between ports of entry, quote unquote, illegally would be denied the ability to apply for asylum. That got struck down quickly, both at the district court level and, and at the Ninth Circuit. And, and despite the Trump administration's uh, decision to flood uh, the federal courts with Republican uh, and Federalist appointees. I think the point remains that federal judges will apply federal law fairly, carefully, and accurately. And under any parsing of what the government's done here, um, no judicial scholar would allow that to stand. I think the Trump administration has already accused you of shopping for the right courts by filing in California. So <laughs> you're shopping, yeah. the immigrants are shopping, everybody's shopping. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to, to talk a bit about, but as we close, you're, you're going to the border tomorrow. What will your work be doing there? What... Um, I'm heading to the border this weekend uh, to help assist migrants who are vulnerable, desperate, in a state of crisis, and they have to navigate a very complicated uh, immigration laws, both the United States' and Mexico. And of course, um, these individuals are scared, destitute, and have been uh, marooned, languishing, on the other side of the border because of the United States policy. Uh, much of my work will be able to quell fears about this potential rule, but also to properly advise people what their rights are. Um, also to listen. I think one of the things mainstream media sort of ignores um, are what these people go through just to even get to the border and, and, and that the administration rejects that and instead is forcing them um, to seek safety and safe haven in very dangerous border towns, prey to cartels, extortion, assaults, um, a whole panoply of evils, is really just another instance of how craven and evil this administration is. Well, let me ask you a question on the heels of that, as to close here, because I think it's an important question given what you just said. I mean, you've been doing this a while, I take it. And so, yeah. and so um, what's the essential difference between how you're fighting these cases now with the Trump administration and what came before that with Obama or even the Bushes? Well, I mean, it's on record that Obama deported more people in history than right. any other president. Right. Right. Um, of course, George Bush started the Department of Homeland Security, um, which is, if you look at actually how it's 
phrased. I mean, there there is no homeland security threat at the border. These are poor, penniless migrants who seek safe haven. There's a reason that we um, ratified uh, the 1951 UN Refugee Convention and the 67 Protocols and passed the 1980 Refugee Act. It's because we weren't up to code with the international human rights standards. And Congress decided in 1980 that we had to be. And under Obama, things were bad, yes, but they weren't this bad. Um, we did hear instances of turnbacks. We did have to sue uh, under detention conditions. But what the Trump administration is doing now is proto-fascism. And I, I, I need to kind of conclude this, but every time you say something, I have to ask you one more quick question, Angela, I'm sorry. But sure. I, I, this, I mean, define, I mean, if, as, as an activist and as a lawyer, what you mean by proto-fascism? We have an office, a despot, who's increasingly set on consolidating power within a small um, group of cronies, this band or retinue uh, of officials who are intent on consolidating power and violating the law um, at every step of the juncture. They have no respect for process. In fact, that's why this is an interim final rule and not uh, passed with the proper notice and comment. And they have no respect for the rights of those who look different from them. Well, Angela Casado, thank you so much, both for your work and for joining us today. We look forward to hearing more. Uh, I really do look forward to like, talking to you when you come back from the border and hearing what you've discovered and where these cases are going. So take care on your travels, and thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Good to have you with us. And I'm Mark Steiner here of the Real News Network. Thank you all for joining us. Take care. Hey y'all, my name is Tharna Noor and I'm a climate crisis reporter here at The Real News Network. This is a crucial moment for humanity and for the planet. So if you like what we do, please, please support us by subscribing at the link below. Thank you.